Okay, and and my name is Issam Giriani. Okay, and how long have you both been married? Twenty-two years. So you guys are veterans. Mm -hmm. Veterans oh, yeah. of marriage. Oh yeah. <laughs> In America, that would be about four or five marriages for most people. <laughs> no, for us it's one, yeah. and probably more than enough, right? <laughs> Okay, so uh, what did you what did you both do before the revolution? Uh, for me, I'm a lawyer, and, uh, very active in uh, uh, about about the, the political things and the political cases in the court. Um, my mother, I'm taking care of my kids, and uh, that's it. I actually, uh, right before the revolution, uh, I was living a businessman's life uh, for the past five or six years. Prior to that, I worked as a psychologist uh, with the uh, special kids, uh, mentally retarded, uh, for about 20 years. And would like to think of myself as also an activist because of her activism. She's a human rights activist. Uh, she's worked like that for many. And she pulled me towards those kind of activities and I enjoy being such. So you were working on human rights even before? You're a human rights lawyer? Yeah. And what did you mainly focus on? Uh, like right before the revolution, what were you focusing on? Uh, we did, uh, me and with the... With the not so many from lawyers, they were lawyers, maybe I think there were 20 or 22 lawyers together and we tried to, to um, act uh, and to do things uh, before with, uh, with uh, about Palestine, about uh, Gaza in 2008 and um, we are trying to, to, uh, uh, to take uh, cases about uh, for the prisoners who was in uh, Gaddafi's regime um, because uh, in the, the past uh, years they are, they are trying to uh, uh, they are trying to uh, sell or um, safe uh, market safe market uh, safe so they are trying to open the door a little bit so uh, we uh, we try to to uh, Take advantage. Take advantage of uh, of this, and um, uh, we um, we are trying to to uh, uh, represent the that the political prisoners and then the court. Um, uh, so um, and after that, there were um, uh, we have the the union of the law, the, the law union. The lawyer union. Uh, it was um, uh, by law. It, it must be just for four years, and after that they have to. to uh, we have to change it. But because of the regime, they they didn't. They kept the people who's in the the lawyer union stay because they are related with the, with the regime. And um, in, uh, in September. We decided that we, we we have to make an action, and to um, uh, to uh, we took a, a signature from hundreds of, of lawyers um, uh, to to change this union, the lawyer union, and um, I don't want to say that all the most of Libyans they were watching us in the internet, what they are doing, because they are afraid we are trying to do something against the, the regime, because it's not able to do anything about about this, because all the unions in all Libyans, in all Libyans, uh, they, um, um, they are watching what they are doing. Maybe because of the regime, they will, uh, they will catch, uh, they will catch them, or, and they will investigate with, with them. And we decided to, to make a meeting in, the, in our, uh, in our uh, uh, building for the union lawyer, but uh, we faced that uh, they closed it by, uh, by chain and uh, 
uh, and we did it in the in the street. We brought chairs and we did this meeting in the in the street, and they sent for uh, for the security the security and police uh, surrounding uh, us. Uh, but we did it, and we we told. Um, they were not too much, maybe there were 17 of the lawyers who came there and we decided to do an election after that. We, uh, we, uh, uh, and all of this is against the, the, the regime, but uh, they were in September and we, we, uh, we decided to to uh, 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 we specified a certain day. Yeah, for, for that, and we came we came in the same place, and we find it closed. Uh, and they brought security and surrounded us with with cars uh, for the security, and uh, they are trying to to uh, uh, cancel this meeting, but we stayed there and we did an election, and after that um, they they. Um, before that, sorry, they tried to call us from uh, from Tripoli, from high uh, high um, level high level uh, persons uh, from the government uh, to to cancel this meeting, and uh, we will discuss about that. Please don't do it, and but we decided to to do it, and uh, we did the selection. But uh, we we faced that after that, uh, they did a big meeting in. Um, uh, in Lajna Shabi al Amma, it's the, like the part, the ministry is the high, uh, uh, it's like the parliament, it's um, uh, high, uh, it's the, high, uh, the highest authority, authority in, the, uh, in, uh, in Libya. And uh, they decided uh, they decided that the, the old, uh, the old uh, team in the, in, the, lawyers union. in the lawyers union, they will stay. And uh, they cancelled, uh, not in legal way, uh, not by law, it's to cancel our election. And after that, we didn't uh, stop. We we took our case to the to the court, and uh, the decision must be in the 21st uh, uh, in February. It's uh, so, but the revolution started in 17th, so we didn't know what uh, what the decision will be. Uh, and after that, in January, uh, there were um, uh, there were a speech from Gaddafi. Uh, he tried to let all the people. Uh, they they try. Uh, he tried to pull all the people from uh, from the, the chairs because everybody tried to to watch what they are going in Tunisia and uh, in, uh, and after that in uh, Egypt about the revolution. They, are, they were all the people here watching, and um, uh, they are very emotional with, uh, with, with the, the, the revolution. So he, he tried to make a uh, speech uh, to to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, to distract uh, to distract the people from the the, the TV. Uh, so he speech that uh, his speech was was uh, uh, to send a message for uh, uh, all poor, poor people uh, to let them okay you can go to take apartments in everywhere in the, in Libya. Uh, so uh, this message sent it uh, by him, and there were like um, a certain time after his speech, uh, three or four hours. The, there were his people trying to push all the, the poor people to, to go and just uh, take the apartment and that apartment it's for the, another people who paid for, for it but he he doesn't care he didn't care about the, the poor people he, he what he's care about it's to to uh, to let to let all Libya in big chaos so they don't think and they don't watch and they don't um, so they would not be revolutionized. I mean, they would not join the revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, after that, um, we were the lawyers. 
our team, they decided, we decided not to be just watching because, you know, uh, all the, the police, they are just going out, they are disappeared from the streets and um, we decided, we, we did a lot of meetings and we decided we have to, to demonstrate, we have to, 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 uh, to let our voice to, to send a message for the government that uh, uh, we did um, a bayan, it's um, a declaration. A declaration from uh, from us to the to the government, but before that, they tried to to call us and to sit with us, and they said, okay, please don't do it. Please, they from from Tripoli, they called us before the demonstration, before the. Uh, two hours they are trying to force us okay we will do whatever you want we will uh, they, they ask us uh, even about the, the the other issue that about the, the the lawyer union so if you are angry about that we can solve the problem just don't go and demonstrate about about this uh, issue but we decided and we went out and we were the only uh, people who get out and stand in, in front of that court in, uh, in uh, Shemel, uh, North, uh, North uh, Benghazi and um, uh, we, uh, we did our uh, declaration uh, uh, for, the, for the government that uh, it's uh, uh, the police um, uh, uh, was instigating the people yeah, instigating the, the people to do crimes because they are stealing they are uh, um, take the uh, proper uh, the, uh, the another people's property, and uh, they are uh, uh, because uh, the, the police they are watching what the, the people they are doing. It's it's a crime by <coughs> itself. So uh, we are trying. We, we send a message. You have to move. You have to. Uh, you uh, you are doing a big chaos in all Libya and. So after that, within two days, um, it was you know it's like a big mess message for for the for the government for Gaddafi. It's uh, because we knew here in Libya everything. It's because of him. So he tried to solve this problem very quickly after our stand in in, uh, in North uh, uh, Court. Uh, so uh, after two days, all the police. Uh, go out and try to solve uh, uh, the, the problem. And after that, uh, this is before the revolutions, uh, maybe um, uh, 25 days or something like that. So I can't exactly, t um, I didn't, I, I'm not remembering now exact, uh, the exact day. Uh, and before the, the, the date of the 17th, we were meeting and we were discussed uh, what will happen in the 17th? The people will come out or not, or it will go just smoothly, or nobody will come, will go out, or and really we didn't expect what uh, what uh, that the revolution will will really it will be here in in, in Libya uh, because the fear it's you know it's um, inside everybody it's you know it's for. 42 years he tried to 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 let the, the fear it's um, it's um, is entrenched within the people yeah so uh, like when you feed anything uh, in, uh, when you feed the the, the, the babies from uh, when he is born for 42 years you know just everything it's ruled by Gaddafi you can't talk you can't move you can't everything it's it's um, it's his it's his farm and we are the slaves here okay if he wants to just give you uh, anything just just because of him okay not it's our rights so um, and he, he uh, He wiped out any concept of human rights. Yeah, and uh, and the belief of these things, you know, because they don't know anything about it. Uh, so um, we we uh, we discuss about that, and uh, really we we found out that since 15th, 
uh, that uh, because of uh, our uh, colleague um, uh, Fatih Terbel, they arrested uh, him, and this is. Uh, it wasn't the first time, you know, for many times that he terribly was in the jail because of his, what he's believed and about Muslim, uh, the massacre is in, uh, in Muslim. Uh, and because of that, we decided that we have to do an action. And uh, we did it in 17th. We, we, uh, uh, there's uh, many lawyers who were in 15th and uh, 16th. And after that, we decided to, to uh, uh, um, demonstrate in, in front of the North uh, Court. But uh, honestly, we didn't say we are against Gaddafi. We said that we want constitution, we want human rights, we want uh, uh, um, um, islah, uh, reforms. Reforms. Uh, um, so, but. Uh, when we were there, we, we tried to uh, to say uh, we said our declaration about uh, about that to the government, and we stayed for uh, two or three hours. And after that, uh, just we want to to everybody goes to to his house because nothing changed. Uh, just we want to send a message about about that that we are here that we are what we want all the, uh, all, uh, all the. People, what what they want exactly from the, uh, from the government? Um, after three hours, uh, we decided to go to go back to our homes, and in that time, just we heard that uh, one of uh, youth uh, uh, died in just 15 minutes or 20 minutes uh, far from uh, from the north uh, north court. And we decided not to go, and we will stay uh, there in front of that court until uh, the regime stopped killing our uh, our people. Uh, and after that, just after an hour, it's changed completely and spontaneously from just demonstration to revolution. And the people just join us. Uh, they 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 came surrounding us. Uh, I don't know because they are um, they are believing uh, about what the lawyers did even before the revolution. We we are they are trying to to um, like um, uh, uh, feel that they are uh, like protection there. Um, so we found that uh, maybe they they think that there's may, maybe there's a leaders there. They they. I don't know what they are thinking about in that in that case, but they are surrounding. They they were surrounding us there in uh, in um, in the north co uh, north uh, uh, the courthouse. Court. And um, we stayed there for many many uh, many days. And after four or five days after the Katiba, the, the compound of the military compound, or uh, fell. Um, after that, we felt that there's responsibility because we were there. Um, we tried really to, to protect this revolution, to save this revolution. And um, we thought because of the people who surrounding us that maybe they are believing in us, that we, we have to do a step. We have to do something to solve this uh, this uh, re revolution. We don't want this revolution just to go in, in a big chaos, so it will disappear. Okay. Um, after that, we decide to go inside the court. Uh, uh, we try to to uh, to think because everything we are not professional in political. We don't. We we are not professional in what. We didn't plan anything. There's no party. There's no organization. So we don't know how to deal with this big things, with the revolution, with with the, with the new. Uh, we want to 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 make a, a body for this uh, this revolution. So we we tried. Um, we were most of us from lawyers and judges, and after that we we try. Uh, uh, some of the political uh, uh, professor from the university joined us, and we discussed. and And after that, we 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 um, 
وصلنا للقرار وي ديسايدد وي ميك ا ديسيجن ذات وي هاف تو تو فايند ا بادي اند وي دونت وونت بنغازي جاست تو تو جو ان بيج كيوس وي وي كرييت ذا ذا بنغازي كونسل اند ات وازنت ان ديموكراتيك وايز يو نو اتس جاست وي Uh, we uh, we know here in Benghazi. Everybody knows we knows each other. So we just uh, 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 mention about many people in different fields that they are known. They are uh, uh, nationals. <laughs> nationals uh, 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 qualified. Uh, so we we tr we create this council and we uh, we uh, put our, uh, uh, for every field to to um, uh, let uh, everything to um, uh, to manage uh, to manage uh, uh, about uh, for for uh, every sector uh, yes for every sector and uh, after that uh, and we we success uh, thanks God. Um, and after that, we, we try to make a council uh, or to create council for the uh, the military. And uh, you, as you you know, we are lawyers, professors, so we don't know anything about the military. But we try to do our best. We try to meet many uh, many of the military leaders and uh, to to create this uh, this council. And we success too, um, uh, because of the support of the people from outside. Because if they were not supporting us, uh, because what we are uh, we, we did, we were not success, of course. And uh, after that, we, we contact with uh, with all the cities, uh, liberty cities from uh, Beida, Derna, Dobrog, the other cities with liberty. And they asked us what what to do, and we told them what we did here in Benghazi, and they did the same. And after that, we decided that we have to 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 um, uh, create body for all of this liberty uh, cities. And uh, after that, we decided that from every council, um, we will um, get together and will be uh, uh, a national uh, council and uh, that's what we uh, we did and we um, um, uh, uh, make a declaration about about that that, uh, that the, uh, we born the uh, national uh, council in all liberty uh, 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 liberty uh, cities and uh, After that, it's uh, sorry I didn't mention that uh, the name of this this uh, this group is the the coalition. It's the the first seed in in that uh, in this uh, uh, revolution. Uh, the name is the coalition. Uh, so I'm I'm in the coalition. coalition of the 17th of February yeah. revolution. Yeah, the, the coalition of the 17th February revolution. Uh, that's it. <laughs> okay, so. My first question will be to you. How do you think, why do you think this turned from protest to revolution? Was it a, a critical uh, mass was reached of population? Or was it, was it just that you had no choice because of the brutality of the, the situation? I think the revolution didn't start from just 15th or 17th. It started from the 17th, after the, the uh, revolution, it's not the revolution from Gaddafi's. The, the, uh, what? Coup d'état. Uh, from uh, because uh, you know from that time uh, there is a lot if is uh, a lot of uh, uh, injustice and harakat cannot go through. Lots of movements. Movements from from 17th, from 67th, from uh, 67th, from the the student. Um, 76. Uh, 76. Yes, yeah, 76. Sorry. Uh, from uh, the, it was the movement from the student in the university, but uh, maybe it's the difference between these movement that here the, all all the people decided, okay, not just group 
of of uh, of, uh, of the people. Um, yeah, and another thing is, uh, I want to say that uh, I want to thank the the revolution in in uh, Tunisia and in e uh, Egypt. That is, it, I think uh, it helped to to break the the fence of fear in in, in inside us. That it maybe we uh, after the revolution in uh, in uh, Egypt and Tunisia, we 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 thought. That's okay. Maybe it, we we can we can do it. We can. They did it. Why why us? We can do it. We can try. We can. Uh, so I think they they gave us a, a, a good push. Um, we they they um, uh, they let the people to recognize and to to uh, about the justice, about the the dignity, about these things who. I think they, they buried, uh, he buried, uh, Gaddafi buried them uh, um, and uh, they didn't feel it for, for a long time, maybe they, for, they forgot uh, what does it mean, the dignity and the justice and the, uh, freedom. the, the freedom, uh, the, uh, the, a lot of meanings, you know, it's disappeared because of his regime. So I think because of all of that together about these feelings, about the what in, in the, the movement with in 42 years about uh, the, the, the push or from the, the Tunisian and the Egyptian revolution, I think all together, uh, 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 all together who give us or give all the people and all the youth uh, the, 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 courage. Uh, the courage to do uh, uh, the, the, uh, this revolution and to, 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 uh, to believe in this revolution and to, to see the, the, um, uh, the victory of the, uh, the revolution in Egypt and uh, in Tunisia. Um, uh, so. I think it's all, all together. It's all together. I can't spread it. It's like chain. Uh, and I think it, it's... It's, um, um, it's an accumulation of many things. So like yeah. a perfect storm? Yeah. Perfect storm of events that... Yeah. Okay, um, did you think it would turn out when this first happened? Let's go back to maybe the 14th or 15th. Did you think it would turn out like this? Or did you think it would turn out uh, more like uh, Ben Ali leaving or Mubarak being pressured to leave? I mean, really, uh, you, you, you meant before the revolution when we decide? It, when when it was in the very like the very first days, the very, before before the a uh, few days before the Khatib, before it got very violent. Mm -hmm. When when you saw what was happening in Tunisia and Egypt, mm -hmm. did you think your means would be the no, same, or no, did? No, no, no. We know we are. We were sure that Gaddafi is not like Hosni Mubarak, not like Ben Ali. Uh, we have. We know that we are expect and expectable because he will not leave. We we we, are, we were sure about that. Uh, he he's his. We 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 know his personality. We know that he's dictator from you know uh, even even Ben Ali and uh, Hosni Mubarak. But he's not human. He's bloody. He's bloody. He's because we saw him. We we, we saw him hanging uh, our people. We saw him. What he did in Muslim. We 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 uh, we know uh, Gaddafi very well. Maybe the world, all the world, they don't know Gaddafi. But even what he did, we are expecting. Uh, uh, we we expected uh, what he what he uh, did, and we expect more. Maybe he has a chemical bomb, maybe, and he will do anything to destroy all the, uh, this country because of himself and his family. He doesn't care, he didn't care about his people for 42 years. We are a rich uh, country, uh, but as w if you, you take your, your uh, camera and just Go. Uh, this is uh, in Benghazi. This is the second city in, in in Libya. If you want to to go and see the other side, 
don't see this view it's marvelous but if you want to see the other side the real libyan the real view from the other side it's not a rich com uh, country it's like afghanistan or another uh, uh, very Calcutta in india yeah i would from my views when i was driving to Beitha, it looked like i was looking at a lost civilization you'd yeah. see skeletal structures everywhere of buildings that hadn't been worked on since 1968, 1969, yeah. but then you'd look carefully and there's a satellite dish sticking out from one and there's one room that was finished mm -hmm. and a family lives in that room and then you see sheep around it and at first you're thinking wow this is a lost civilization yes. and then you see you see signs of life in that yeah. and it was absolutely like staggering to see. It is basically it was 42 years of stagnation that's exactly what we had. He had never accomplished anything relatively to the period that he ruled Libya for over 42 years. I believe uh, if you want to measure his achievements in Libya, you would say nil, zero. He hasn't done anything. As a matter of fact, he had demolished many of the institutions that the previous government to his reign was, had, had built or had uh, formed in somehow or another. Uh, so he was, uh, uh, he definitely made Libya live probably about 50, 60 years backwards and uh, no policy. development. Well, yes, of course, it is a policy of his not to allow the country to develop, not to allow any institution to succeed, actually not to allow the emergence of any institutions whatsoever because institutions uh, require organization and or organization goes against his nature. He ruled this country by the lack of organization, by his whims and wishes. Uh, he decided everything. Um, no Libyan was ever a decision maker. They were all implementers of decisions and the decisions had only one source and that is his head. Describe some of his whims and wishes. Describe some of his whims and wishes. I'll tell you the man-made river, what he calls the man-made river. This is one of his whims and wishes. Okay, it was a project that was supposed to provide water to the uh, to the uh, Libyan cities, and uh, he wanted to have it done in a certain way with four-meter pipes in diameter, four-meter diameter pipes, and to bring it from all the way in the desert to the coastal area in Libya, uh, regardless of the cost, the feasibility of the project itself, while we had almost 2,000 kilometers of beaches where desalination uh, units okay, would have been much more economically feasible and much easier to maintain than to have such a huge project done or carried out just because he wanted something that would put him in history as the great provider of water that he brought the water from the desert in four meter uh, diameter pipes. Now, in order to provide himself, okay, or provide the piping for this project, they had to build a special factory in Libya to produce the four meter diameter pipes, and which I think was unnecessary uh, it gobbled up lots of billions of dollars and for probably half the cost or quarter of the cost he could have supplied all the Libyan cities with water desalinated from the sea and much easier to maintain and probably with less environmental consequences, negative consequences as we are seeing already in the desert because of this man-made river. What are the environmental consequences? Well, uh, lots of people are talking right now about oases that are drying out because the level of water, okay, the underground water is uh, falling. Uh, also, there are many reports that suggest that uh, the environment there is going to have cavings, okay, in time once this water is pulled out. Uh, drained out of the uh, of its place and uh, these in themselves are quite uh, dire consequences plus the fact that uh, the Libyan budget the Libyan government budget had to concentrate okay for that project to provide the money for that project for so long he had imposed taxes extra taxes on people to uh, finance this project he had uh, imposed uh, I don't mean, worry about it, yeah. 
you know, so many things uh, that to make that project succeed, regardless of what it would cost and what kind of uh, environmental consequences would result out out of such a project. That seems to be uh, something that would devastate uh, very fragile ecosystems as well. Definitely, definitely. You know, deserts are very, very fragile ecosystems and uh, water is in rare supply in the desert. And once you deprive these oases from water, then you had really devastated the oasis and the people that used to live on those oasis. And this is exactly what is happening right now. Even though I would have to say the coastal cities enjoyed the water, Yes, we did, but the same water could have come for much cheaper and much easier to maintain operations okay, from the coastal, the sea water, than to bring it more than a thousand kilometers from the south. So there is no planning and infrastructure really, just all whims. He is the only planner, he is the only theoretician, he is the only everything that was in Libya. Take it or leave it. It must be uh, all his dreams come true. Exactly. This is his uh, way to think, you know. That's uh, how he ruled the country. He didn't, uh, uh, in all the history, he didn't hear that any of the leaders uh, tell his people, please just get out from your country. Just go to, to Africa or any place, just take uh, <laughs> 10,000 or I don't know how, uh, how much, I don't know. Uh, he proposed, he proposed money to Libyans in order to take them and leave the country, go to Africa, go and live in Africa. Why don't you go to the heavens on earth? People out. I you know? I've never heard about this. It's something unbelievable. So he just he has some bizarre dream one night, maybe, and then suddenly that becomes a notion, and that notion somehow, when it comes out of his mouth, becomes, becomes a law. decision or a law. Yeah. So you have a a very fluid constitution. Essentially, one that contradicts itself all the time. And well, actually, if you would want to call it a fluid constitution, I would probably call it uh, the, non the state of non-constitution. You know? We never had any constitution. We had a green book, which is a very trivial uh, book that had uh, trivial ideas, childish in many ways, and he imposed it on us and he translated it into more than 90 languages and he distributed it all over the world for the world to see the genius of his mentality and i don't know if anybody had ever seen any genius in those books if you read it you can tell exactly what kind of mentality that had produced such a book well i don't think most people have read the green book uh, i don't think anybody should read <laughs> the green book ask ask most americans or british you know they've only heard of the green book in the last three months yeah, yeah. so <laughs> Even well, though he spent a lot of money on it, huh? Well done. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, very good. So, we have a leader that, he reminds me of uh, King Mithridates of Pontus. I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, king who fought the Romans. Because uh -huh. uh, he got a lot of support from the outside because he had the audacity to stand up to the Romans. However, his people absolutely despised him. And in many cases, they would rather have the Romans rule them than him. This is a fantastic analogy because something like that had happened in, in Gaddafi's time. While he was talking about Palestine, he was talking about revolutionary struggle, he was talking about all these things. So he had lots of people listening from other countries, okay, and they thought that he would be a perfect leader for all the revolutions of the world, okay, while he was actually uh, repressing his people to an extent that they had never realized. So he's a leader that probably thought Libya was too little for him to be a leader of Libya or to build Libya. That was too small of an achievement no matter what he achieved here. In Libya. So he was ashamed of being leader of Libya. Exactly. Yeah. It's too big for Libya. One second. We have a... You would have loved to rule oh, the world. Okay. Somebody, somebody tried it. Yeah, I got it. Take that. That's all. This is very good. Okay, so... Yeah, it, it amazes me though that and I just keep. Uh, and he's, I think he's sick. You know, his, his ego is. You think? <laughs> I am sure he's sick. <laughs> sick is really sick, in, even before, not these days. No, I no, think no, from before, yes. For for 42 years, just he tried to be um, uh, the the leader of the um, Amir Qawmiya. Uh, he's the leader of uh, Arab nationalism. 
and no. after that for Africa, he changed it to to Africa, and after that that he's uh, the kings of the ki uh, king of kings, king of kings. So he's trying in all these years that he's he's trying to rule not just five six million. He tried to rule, you know, the, the world. So he kept on promoting himself. Uh, so uh, he, he should have promoted it. himself the general instead. You know, one day, one day he came out in a speech where he spoke about the failure of implementation of the Green Book ideas in Libya. And you know what he said to the Libyan people? He said, this book is too good for you. Uh, this book should have been taken by the Swiss because the Swiss are civilized and they would know the value of this book. But for you, too bad. You know, you could not understand this book and that's why it's failing here in Libya. It's not because of the stupidity of the ideas, it's because we are not up to the standard of his book in order to make his ideas work. And his ideas were basically a mixture, uh, a disorganized mixture of some socialist ideas, some humanistic ideas that were put together, some very crazy thoughts, some that would reflect an inflated ego. Uh, he thought, I, I believe myself, the only reason that he had not declared himself God is because he thought that uh, people are not ready yet for that. But he would have declared himself God if he found a chance to do that. Well, he acts like a God king. He acted yeah. like a God, but he could not say it because he knew that the people would not accept it. So, but I believe that if he had sense that people would accept him being a God, he would have said, I created the world. And the world revolves around me and nobody else. And there's another thing we didn't mention about that the corruption. Oh God! The corruption in 42 years that he uh, try he tried to protect this the corruption, you know, to let all the people, all the, the in high level, uh, involve in, in in corruption in many ways. And, uh, you know, the corruption here in Libya, you can start it from high level until the lowest the lowest so there there is you know the the uh, and he know uh, he knew exactly what the what are uh, the people uh, doing uh, in in all levels and uh, the corruption is, he encouraged the, yeah he encouraged in many in many direction he knew everything and he's happy he's this is his policy okay to let uh, uh, much people involved in big, uh, uh, big, um, uh, 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 corrupt operations. Uh, corrupt operations. Yes. So they will be um, protect him. Okay. When you involve in, in corruption, okay, you want this regime to go on. To continue. Continue. I mean, he uh, he encouraged corruption in such a way because he knows one thing. And that is basically as corrupt as the people would become, okay, it is for his own security because people would try their best to protect his regime. And the thing, I mean, the one tool of corruption that he implemented and he used very well was basically the low standard of living that he imposed upon the people. I mean, this is one of the richest countries in the world, relatively. I mean, this is an oil-producing country and gas-producing country with great potential for so many other resources, natural and otherwise. And uh, the standard of living was so low that people had to uh, steal, had to accept bribes or yeah. demand bribes in order to make ends meet. So I was a master's holder. I was an instructor at the university. I was for 20 years working with the disabled and my retire my retirement pension is 300 Libyan dinars which were at best $2. at best were equal to 200 dollars so he put people in such a position that if you wanted to live figure out how you make more money so he had everybody you find somebody in an office you go to issue a birth certificate for your child okay so you find the guy sitting in the in, in that office who is getting paid 200 Libyan dinars which probably are not up to 150 dollars and he's sitting there and he's demanding money from you in order to issue the uh, birth certificate you want to stand in a long queue for uh, maybe two days at a time you come in the morning you leave at two o'clock you come next day and 
stand in the queue to get the birth certificate, that's fine. Otherwise, pay 100 dinars and you get it immediately, or it's brought to you at home. So in this way, he encouraged corruption over and over in all sectors, in all sectors. Imagine this is one country in the world where a hospital would take more than 36 years to be completed and more than probably two billion dollars were spent on that hospital okay which which probably should have cost no more than 150 to 200 million dollars okay so those practices i mean they were intentional in order to encourage people to make ends meet through corruption so do you think he so there's a sy systematic individualization policy as well Definitely. with the, the yeah. free for all with the houses. If you if you go in the house, you own it. You own it. So this was uh, to atomize the people. So and with the rule, what you five people couldn't gather together. Was it five or four? Uh, four. Four, four people four at uh, at what you call them at well, times when they enforced when they enforced the emergency laws and things like this. And whenever they felt. Uh, nervous about anything that is going around in the country, they would impose that. And there is no congregations more than four people on the streets. If you congregate more than that, uh, security police or any kind, any form of police, we got to a point where we didn't know how many security systems, the groups that are in Libya. There are so many police forces, there are so many security forces, there are so many revolutionary forces, where he got people to be apprehensive to criticize the government even in their own houses you know there was a time where you could not criticize the government even inside your house because you don't know if the walls have ears and could listen to you you know and that's the kind the of 80s, psychological uh, in the 80s yeah, the really psychological state that he imposed on people he made them scared to even voice their opinion I mean sometimes you would think and there are lots of jokes about that that even your thoughts you know, you'd be scared of your thoughts. You may go and tell about yourself, okay, tell of people that, hey, I thought such and such, what would you like to do to my thoughts? You know, would you like to arrest my thoughts? You know, people were so scared. That's a psychological state of mind that he imposed on people, especially during the 80s. Yeah, it was incredible. It was incredible, the psychological atmosphere that he imposed on the people. Oh. Uh, so, this is, I, I always say, this is a regime that the world has never seen anything like, is not seeing anything like, will never see anything like in the future. This is a unique regime. I'm a psychologist and I was talking to some psychologist friends and we were talking about the DSM, which is uh, the diagnostic manual for the uh, uh, psychological illnesses and abnormalities. And they said, is he a sick person? I said, no, you'd have to add a new classification to psychological disorders, okay? And that is the classification of Gaddafi syndrome, okay? And you'll probably get one every a thousand years. Yeah. But this is a man that so is he's, totally out of his mind. So he's a proper megalomaniac. He is, megalomania, like I said, uh, is mentioned in the DSM, okay? But I think they would have to add to it something else. <laughs> It's you know, not complete. No, not complete, definitely. Gaddafi megalomania, maybe. Well, uh, it it's, harkens back to the old days when uh, the Roman emperors decided to name themselves as gods. He has. He has in so many ways. You know, we have uh, soldiers that were in prison, prisoners of war, okay, and usually for Muslims, uh, the last thing that they would like to come out of their mouth is... Uh, the uh, Islamic vow and that is basically that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is his messenger and this is something that most Muslims would like to say to be the last thing that they say before their death okay and uh, we hear stories of some of his cronies okay that while dying they were being told by the other revolutionaries to say that vow and they would not say it huh. They would not say it you know and he indoctrinated them in such a way where they got to the point where they believed that he's probably god or close to god at least so switching uh subjects slightly uh so the council formed in a very short period of time 
how is the, the miraculous pro yeah miraculous scene how is the progress and what type of growing pains are you having and are there worries of uh, a hijacking of the revolution from the youth and that's a lot of questions at once <laughs> I don't think that they are they are afraid to to anybody stealing uh, the revolution for for the time being because we are not liberated yet. Liberated, uh, liberated uh, yeah. yet, because uh, we are waiting for for um, our people in in uh, in Jabal Nafusa and Misrata in Tripoli. So um, I think it's it's a little bit early to 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 know what's going on until all our countries liberate, liberated. So uh, after that, because everything will be changed automatically, because you know the, it will be a, a lot of people from, uh, I think all the system will, will, will change, but because there is no fear, they, every, <coughs> everyone had, they will uh, um, express uh, uh, themselves in, in the media, they can say everything and they will not let any dictator come again. They are waiting to, for election, they are waiting for democratic uh, country, uh, for uh, constitution. I know everything It's new for them, uh, uh, for, for uh, all, uh, all people here and it will take times to understand what's democracy, what's freedom, what, what's the, uh, what's the con constitution, uh, to learn about everything. So I think we have to. Uh, I think we, we have uh, challenges for the for uh, to f to face it in for after Gaddafi uh, leave our our country or killed or I hope. Uh, I also believe another thing. Sorry. Yeah. I also believe that even though, I mean, uh, something that is unfortunate, the uh, number of number of dead people or martyrs that we've had for this revolution, but the higher number of people that are sacrificed for this revolution, that sacrifice themselves for this revolution, make this revolution much more valuable, and that in itself will protect it from any hijacking. Another thing that we are trying to do with the youth now in Libya, and there is basically, yes, it is a revolution of the youth, in a sense that the youth were the fuel of this revolution, but we are working on convincing them that in order to protect the revolution and secure a democratic nation in the future, for them, we are not working for ourselves. I mean, we are probably past our middle ages. So for the youth, in order to be able to have a dignified life in the future, they would have to allow the more experienced uh, uh, technocrats okay, to run the country in the future to secure this revolution. And I think we are seeing the Egyptian and the Tunisian revolution as to how it is being uh, hijacked, like you say, uh, from the youth. But we are trying to put some, something into action that would protect it from hijacking. Uh, something that is by raising awareness that the country needs the capable, needs the qualified, needs the technocrats, experienced technocrats in order to run the future government, as well as the fact that we have in Libya paid much more blood into this revolution that made it much more valuable to just forfeit later for anybody that would think of uh, hijacking it. I don't think it's going to be the same scenario as is taking place in Egypt or Tunisia. So you think you're likelier to have a much brighter future than your neighbors in, in that aspect? I think so for, two, for another reason as well. I mean, uh, we have to realize one thing, and that is basically that Libya is a very rich country and uh, a very small population. We are only six million, the population. So when you take these two factors, the small population and the great means that are available for Libya, that it is an extra ingredient for success in the future than Egypt, which is 80 plus million with lesser means, and Tunis, which is probably about 25 million and with much lesser means. So we have something that would work in our favor 
that is not available in these two other revolutions. And just the, I've just seen, I keep on seeing opportunities for, I mean, tourism at the very least, but then also wind and solar power. I mean, that, that could be, I mean, you could, uh, you could really uh, be the electricity merchants for Southern Europe with that. Just with wind and solar power, I mean, at your disposal, you have a, a massive desert. It gets a huge amount of sunlight and a great deal of wind. And so, I mean... I think the Libyan skies had been identified as uh, one of the clearest skies in the world. Okay, like you said, I mean, we have a desert with no cloud cover whatsoever, no humidity, and thus there is great potential for solar, and as well as wind power and, uh, and gas and natural. And the ruins, you know, we have uh, probably, I would, I would not be exaggerating if I say that we probably have more ancient ruins, Greek ruins in Libya, than Greece has. Okay, we have great potential. We have 2,000 kilometers of beaches and uh, there is great potential for future tourism. Uh, uh, a fellow American uh, journalist that was here uh, and he went around the whole eastern part of the country and checked all these places. Uh, I met with him one day and he said, you know what, Isama said what? He said, with the small population that you have, you can keep your oil underground and just work on the tourist industry. And I think that this country could live off it and keep this for the future, you know, or to at least subsidize whatever tourist industry that you need here by the oil. But Libya can live off of their tourism more than anything else. Okay, so how do you see the Libya of a few years uh, a few years down the line? Um, we have to to work hard, very hard, because we don't want to spend too much time. Uh, for, for, for building ourselves. Okay? We, uh, here in Libya for 42 years there is no uh, parties, there is no uh, civil society, uh, so we have to, to build it um, uh, um, very quickly but surely. We want to, to um, um, uh, let the experienced uh, people help us um, uh, we want, you know, to uh, um, let the people, uh, let the, uh, our youth, and uh, and I want to, to uh, mention anything, uh, something else that uh, this revolution it's not for just the youth revolution. It's the whole people, the whole people here in Libya. It's uh, the old man. Revolted the, everybody. Everybody, and I'm against this. Uh, tarif is uh, uh, against this uh, uh, tarif is... Uh, she is, I mean basically that we are against the classification of this revolution as a youth yeah. revolution because it is actually the revolution of the people and it was fueled by by the youth. The yeah. youth are the, the, the tool that really made this revolution come about and, uh, and galvanized this revolution but it is actually the revolt of all of the population and of Libya. I want to prove it because in 76, as I said in, uh, earlier, earlier uh, about the youth, what they did in, 60, in 76, uh, just the youth that they did um, uh, uh, demonstrations. demonstrations and uh, many actions against the, the regime. But because not all the people uh, support them, it failed. So that's why I, I, I insist to tell that this revolution, it's not just the youth revolution, it's the people. Everybody's, uh, everybody's revolution. revolution. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so to go back to the, the answer, uh, as I told you that we need to, to build our ourselves. Uh, for my, my personal uh, hope, that I wish, that I want to be, I want the woman involved in political, uh, political life, in activity. political activity, and to 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 uh, go uh, get uh, to to um, make progress and to go in uh, who's the the, um, the decision maker. Okay, so um, 
I want to support all uh, all women uh, to to I want to I want to encourage them. I want to to let them to know what's their their um, their rights uh, to be there and to involve in in this uh, field uh, uh, because uh, before it's a shame if you involve in any political uh, action uh, uh, here in Libya we, we we didn't because you know it's it's uh, it's like play it's a big Place. But it was shameful for both, for us and well, for you. Yeah, for, 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 <laughs> for us and for, for women and for men too. But because, you know, in uh, uh, the, the, the position of the woman uh, before, it's, uh, most of the time she, she is not uh, very active. M maybe in this revolution she, she uh, she touches that and she felt that she did something she she went in, in uh, to, to the street to demonstration she felt that uh, there is an uh, a role in uh, in, the, in this uh, revolution